Yo, your boy is back on the bodybuilding game. Oh, what happened was I was on sabbatical, innit? But I'm back. Back with a vengeance, you know what I'm saying? And I've got a frosty little upper body workout for you, yeah? It's gonna leave you pumped. Let's get it. So firstly, this is, this is my training plan, right? And with it being my training plan, is I've structured it in a certain way for me. So I wanted to go through the three reasons why I structured it this way before I get into the program. So if you're going to emulate it, you know why you're emulating it. Yeah, feel me? So this is about my, my training plan as a whole at the moment, my workout split. If you want to see the workout split, I don't know, write banana split in the comments. And then I know, right, they want to see it. And I'll make the video. Number one is I wanted to work on specific areas to bring them up more than the other areas which I've already built a good base on, right? So for me is I have a very high insertion point for my vastus lateralis which is the quad sweep i generally want a better quad sweep and i also want to build up the muscle building like towards my knee as much as i can because my medialis the teardrop is wild and then my chest mainly my upper chest so this clavicular point here i feel like it's not as <laughs> as it could be so i'm trying to build out and then also my rear delts because my front delts are mad my side delts i've worked on them they're now kind of mad my rear delts are getting better, but I just want a little bit more on it. Which leads to number two, which is why I'm now training lower body three times a week. That is to bring up the specific areas that I've, I've talked about and just bring them up generally. Which then leads on to number three, which is bringing up my legs generally anyway. I have long legs, so it's, it's, it's harder for me to just, I want them wham, whammies. Like right now, they're kind of like, wham. I want the whammies. You get me? But if you're new to the channel, even if you're not new, my name is Gabriel Say. I make videos to help you along your fitness and adulting journey because adulting is hard. So if this video helps in any way, shape or form, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped it a little like. Subscribe if you're into this type of content. Join the conversation in the comments down below. And as always, hit your boy up on the gram. What's up? You know what to do. Smash the ting, yeah? So the first exercise after the warm up, so make sure all the joints are moving. <laughs> Kicked it off with incline pin press. And if you've watched me for a while, or if you trained with me, you'll know that these dead stop and pin press type exercises are like, they're so underrated. So underrated. Specifically with the incline pin press, the fact that you have to reset every time. So you bring the bar down. And as you can see, the safety bars aligns the bar like right above my chest, like literally with a couple of millimeters to spare. From that point, you're in the deepest position for the bench. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys are like this, like you'll be benching and then after like a few reps, you, it's like you have to adjust yourself again because sometimes it's like the speed of the reps that you're doing. It, like there's a lot of things that just pull away from the, the overall tightness that you're keeping. If you're doing pin press, you have to reset each time. So you're gonna be tight each time and you're starting from that bottom position. There's no shoulders rounding forward, it is all just chest. Then we move on to flat dumbbell press. Now this is mainly because like unilateral work is so important. When you're doing a bench press, I'm always telling people to act as though you're wrapping the bar away from you. So that brings the elbows in. With the dumbbells, you can literally just do that. So turn them in. You've got a lot more control. You start to spot weaknesses as well. Like sometimes if you're benching both together, you'll notice that this one's a little bit weaker. You're like, okay, so there's weakness on this arm. How can I rectify that? And this is just a quick tip that I'm just gonna throw out there. If you are in that situation and you're getting to that point where you're like, that one's struggling, this one's not, you make a note and then the following week, you'll then reduce the weight slightly so you hit the weight on this one. And you still rep with this one and then get an extra two on the one that's lagging. So then you'll end up hitting 10 and 12. So you might all 10 and then bang, one, two. Just a couple bonus reps. Then once you've done that a couple times, you'll then go back up to the weight and then hopefully you'll be hitting the amount that you were meant to hit before. So maybe it was 10, you're hitting it comfortably on there. This one might want to do more, but don't listen to it. Just listen to this one, the weaker one, because he's important, he's priority. Eventually, everything starts to balance out. Feel me? And the next exercise started off as the kind of like plate load press, single arm. I was sitting down, I was thinking, yeah, you can, you can overload this, but it's just, it's, even if I use the incline one, it's just, it's too similar. Then I wanted to change it to the underhand grip, but in the gym that we're at, it, it doesn't feel comfortable on the wrist. And I was like, 
No, need, need something else. So I ended up switching it for the decline bench. Decline bench mainly because if you've tried it, you'll notice that shoulder activation, which is a very common problem for me, is almost non-existent when you're doing decline bench, but you still feel the contraction across the whole chest. It might be focused a little bit more towards the bottom, but I feel it all the way across. Now, I ideally wanted to do it on a Smith machine, but for some reason at 4 a.m., the gym was rammed. I don't understand. Then we moved on to the cable fly, which is a great exercise for just stretching the muscle, getting a good squeeze. But here's a little quick tip that I recorded for my Instagram. All right, so quick tip on cable flies, any type of fly actually. We need to understand, chest muscle attaches somewhere here and comes across this way to get maximum contraction. It needs to come across the body like that. So when you're doing cable flies, imagine like your girl's just gone to the gym. She's just done like a leg and booty workout. They're like, mm, you just want to mm, <laughs> grab it. Same thing, it's like there. And then when you get there, it's just kind of pull it inwards a little bit. What's that? What's that? Oh, oh, just a little, oh. And it gets maximum squeeze. Watch this. I'm a squeeze there. <laughs> oh, baby, that's looking great. Oh, look at that cake. Mmm, you don't work out today, huh? How about Netflix and chill? <laughs> oh God. So as you probably noticed, part one was very chest focused. Now we're moving into the back, the arms, rear delts, and this is gonna be the superset. So part two is a superset series. First part of this superset, we have the rear delt row and the pull-ups. So the rear delt row, I like to have it with this cable machine chest supported and you know keep it nice and high straight into standard pull-ups so already we're hitting the upper back we're hitting the rear delts we're hitting the lats and yes i could have used lat pull downs but i also think it's really important to maintain using your body weight on the harder exercises when you can because anyone can lat pull down not everyone can do a pull-up so having the skill of doing a pull-up whether you have to use bands to start with is more beneficial in the long run lat pull downs have their place as well then the next superset I didn't want to do a shoulder press. I don't need any more shoulder press. If you need shoulder press, then do shoulder press. I don't need any more shoulder press. So I do lateral raises, superset with a dumbbell row. So the dumbbell row I do on an incline bench, chest supported, and it's nice for getting that real thickness in the back. Lateral raises give me the nice cap. I've hit the rear delt, I've hit the side. I don't really need to hit the front. So it, everything balances for me. Then finishing with a final superset, which is for arms, which is using the long rope. So if you don't have the long rope, you can just use two of the normal ropes and just extend them out. And that basically gives you so much more range of motion in the triceps. You bring it up, you can take it to Mars, feels great. And then you swap it over and then you do the bicep curls. The things with both of these, is that your body needs to be in line with the direction of the cable. Does that make sense? So if the cable is going at this angle, then you also need to be at this. So on the bicep ones, you need to be at that angle. So you're leaning back. If you've pulled out and you're doing the triceps and it's coming down at this angle, your body needs to be in this angle as well. And then you're pulling down and back. Does that make sense? As a little teaser, because remember you need to put banana split in the comments, but the upper body back focus workout is similar structure, but flipped. And now focusing on more of the back stuff. And then we've got the accessory stuff in the superset series in part two of the workout. But that's it. That's my upper body workout at the moment. Give an inch, mate. Oh, my mum said if I, if I pose like this too much, I'll get stuck. I'm okay with that, but it's Oh yeah, and, um, feel free to like mix up exercises if the exercises aren't exactly for you. You know, use the same system if you if you want. Leaves a good, a really good pump. A rumpy pumpy.